First point here, guys, Cybertruck, it has a massive warranty. It's a 150 mile warranty, eight years. Doesn't matter how much you use the battery pack. Here's the key. This is an incredible opportunity to make money. It could pay for your Cybertruck, in fact, if you think about it and do this really smart. The battery pack in the Cybertruck is, is said to be approximately 123 kilowatt hours in size. It's massive, but you can use this battery. You can combine it with Tesla Powerwall to create power share, and you could actually make huge amounts of money from selling power to the grid or from paying for your own power completely and selling power to the grid in times of emergency when Pika plants jump in. The other option here is starting a business where you could charge other cars. Now, other companies say, we have vehicle to load, we have vehicle to home, we have all these features, but they don't really. You've got to go and pay thousands of dollars to get them to actually work or pay for these add-ons. But with the Cybertruck, this is a feature no one is really talking about. They don't realize it's way more game-changing than what anyone has mentioned. If you have solar panels on your roof, one, or you have a Tesla Powerwall at home, PowerShare or the Tesla Cybertruck is a brilliant option. In fact, you could start a business to make a lot of money doing this. And the thing is Powerwall, it actually has a very small, so if you have a Tesla battery at home, it doesn't send that much power to your devices. It's fairly limited. If you connect it to the Cybertruck, its power increases by a factor of four. Massive game changer for people who have a Tesla battery at home at the moment. Tesla has revealed a thing called PowerShare. It's bi-directional charging. Here's everything we know about it so far. Will it come on future Tesla cars? I think it will. It's on the Cybertruck. There could be more models to follow with this feature. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Now, it's about to be the weekend. It's actually here in Australia. It's 1 a.m. on Friday night, which is, I guess, technically Saturday morning. But there's been so much interesting news today. And my boys, I had to get them out in the water to go for a surf after school today. So I didn't do as much work as what I planned on. So here we are at 1 a.m. in the morning. Tesla has just delivered the first cyber trucks i think 15 of them and they come with a feature that no one's really talking about it's called bi-directional charging so bi-directional charging how does it work well you can plug whatever you want into the power points that are in the rear in the bed of the truck even if you buy the cyber tent or whatever it's called then you can still plug them in i think this is a really good feature and they have quite a bit of power it's apparently about 11 kilowatt of power they can send out so if you want to run your house on the Cybertruck, you could run your house. I mean, you wouldn't want to do that for a long time. Obviously, if you had a blackout, that's definitely an option. 11 kilowatt is a fair bit. So I think that would be enough for the average household to get by in, an, in a relatively emergency situation. Or, hey, if you want to, this is another option. Send your solar to the battery. Use it as like a battery storage device. Then in the afternoons, when you're running your air conditioners, use your battery pack to run your air conditioners. That can save you a lot of money on electricity. Or at nighttime, um, when you don't have the solar panels that are able to get, you know, get power from the sun at nighttime, then use your car to run your house. Tesla has talked about bi-directional in the past, but it's never really committed to it. Elon Musk said this, I don't think very many people are going to want to use bi-directional charging unless you have a power wall, because if you unplug your car, your house goes dark. This is extremely inconvenient. Now, one of the other reasons Tesla hasn't enabled this feature before is batteries. It believes that if you're going to run your house on your, then your car batteries will wear out sooner, is what I think that that could lead to warranty issues. Now with the Cybertruck, Tesla's actually got the longest warranty that it's had for years on any vehicle. So even though this vehicle does have bi-directional charging, there's actually a 150,000 mile warranty on the battery pack and the powertrain on the Cybertruck, 150,000 miles. That's, that's massive. A lot more than what I expected it to be, considering it has this feature and considering it's not using lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's Tesla's relatively new 4680 cylindrical battery cells, NCA chemistry, not LFP, which is considered to 
to last longer. Anyway, on Tesla's website, they have a feature called PowerShare. PowerShare is Tesla's new bi-directional charging feature. It has the ability to do vehicle to load, vehicle to home, and V2V. V2V is vehicle to vehicle. So if you've got a friend with an electric car or you've got an electric car yourself, you can send power from your Cybertruck to another vehicle. Or technically, if that vehicle has V2V as well, you can send power from that vehicle straight to the Cybertruck. That's kind of a cool feature. You can use your Cybertruck for emergencies. Vehicle to load is a reference to the vehicle's capability to power equipment. And the Cybertruck has five power outlets. It has two 120 volt outlets, a 20 amp outlet in the bed and cabin, and one 240 volt, 40 amp outlet in the bed. So in total, there's five power outlets. That's quite a lot. These can be used obviously for work equipment. If you wanna go uh, say camping, if you wanna just do anything, put some stuff that needs to be, have an air compressor to blow it up. This is actually a really good feature. And the reason I say this is because many pickup truck and SUV owners go and buy a battery pack just for this purpose, right? To be able to do things like deflate or inflate your tires. If you wanna go on sand, if you wanna go drive on sand and you try to drive on sand and you don't deflate your tires, about a 90% chance you're gonna get very, very stuck so if you're gonna go driving on sand, guys, deflate your tires to something around about between 12 to 16 PSI, depending on how hard the sand is, and then you can reinflate your tires. Now with the power points in the vehicle, you can very easily plug in a compressor and it's really quick to do it. I have a cordless one, it's really slow, but if you've got one that you can plug into a power point, you can do it really, really quickly. That's one big advantage. So Cybertruck is capable of bi-directional charging features and we already knew that, but those specs say it has actually 12 kilowatt output. So to compare this to another vehicle, the Ford F-150 Lightning has 9.6 kilowatt maximum draw. So 12 for the Cybertruck versus 9.6 for the Ford F-150 Lightning. But now if you want to get 9.6 kilowatt maximum draw from your Ford F-150, you've got to pay for the Pro Power onboard package. So you've got to pay an extra, I think it's about an extra $1,000. It's only 2.4 kilowatt without that. So 2.4 kilowatt versus Tesla's standard 12 kilowatt. There's a pretty big difference there, obviously. Cybertruck has the capacity of 11.5 kilowatt for vehicle to home. So you can power your home, power a fair few devices. If you've got to say an air conditioner that, run, that runs at five kilowatt, then maybe you have two of those. You could run two air conditioners and your fridge. So it makes sense for emergency. Keep your stuff in your fridge fresh. Now, if you want to do the same thing with the Ford F-150 Lightning, you probably think, oh, no problem. You can just do it with the Ford F-150 Lightning. No, you can't. You actually have to pay $4,000 for an additional unit and you have to install that unit. So it's not actually possible. However, if you want to do it with your Cybertruck, you buy Tesla's universal wall connector and gateway. So the wall connect is $600, I should say, and the gateway costs $1,800. So yeah, you've got to pay extra money to do this, but it's if you do it with the Cybertruck option, it's going to cost you around about $2,400. With the Ford, it's going to cost you $4,000. That doesn't include installation. So whatever your installation costs are as well, that goes on top. So how does it compare to Tesla's Powerwall? It's actually quite different. For one, it's obviously way bigger. A Powerwall is only around a 13.5 kilowatt total capacity. The battery pack in the Cybertruck is said to be 123 kilowatts. So it's said to be nearly 10 power walls would equal a single Cybertruck battery. Now, this is another positive though. If you have power wall and Tesla's wall connector, you don't need to pay for power share. So you're already set up and ready to go. You can already use it to power your house. The power wall and Tesla's wall connector, it'll work straight away from doing that. So considering there's so many people that already have power wall set up, this will be a really good feature for them and they can save a lot of money. Hopefully you're watching this if that's you, and you don't go out and buy those things that you don't actually need. Now, in theory, if you do connect it and you've got a single power wall, then that would mean that theoretically you have about 130 kilowatt hours of storage at home. Uh, my cousin, he's got a massive solar array on his house. It's absolutely enormous. It's just amazingly big. I, I believe it's a 20 kilowatt solar system. Now he could charge his Cybertruck within a few days, and obviously having a power wall battery, he can charge that as well. And then he could use this for his home power, just completely. This would run, with the power wall, you'd be able to run your entire home. 
And this would save you a lot of money. Just run this at nighttime, set it up to, to switch on at nighttime, and you'd never have any power bills. It would be a really, really cool way to operate. Now, Tesla says PowerShare can power a home for over three days, assuming the home uses around 30 kilowatt hours per day. You should be able to power it for actually about four days. So if you're using 30 kilowatt per day, then obviously 30 times four would be 120 kilowatts and you'd still have a bit of power left over. But that would also assume you didn't get any power coming from solar. But you would, of course, if you've got solar panels, even if it's shady, you're still going to get power from solar. So really, theoretically, if you've got solar panels on your roof and you've got one single power wall battery, plus you've got your cyber truck, you could probably run your house for about a week. Now, that's pretty cool. Maybe even longer than that, depending on how much power you use at home. The other thing you could do, and this would make you potentially a lot of money, if you can be part of Tesla's virtual power plant, Tesla has them in lots of cities now worldwide, you could sell energy to the grid when it's expensive. So you just sign up to be part of Tesla's VPP and you could sell a lot of power to the grid. You could probably make quite a lot of money actually doing this. I'd estimate in some cases you can make $10,000 a year, depending on where you are, and depending on how many blackouts there are. But if there's blackouts, that's when you're gonna make a lot of money. Make sure you're connected to the grid at those periods of time. And hopefully you uh, don't have a blackout, but locations near you do. That would be perfect. That's an instance where the peaker plants will jump in. And these are massive coal and gas peaker plants. They are super expensive. Electricity from peaker plants is normally about 70 times more expensive than the normal price of electricity. But what you can do is act as a virtual peaker plant. This would make you a lot of money within a very, very short space of time. Now the Cybertruck has a higher continuous output capability than the Powerwall does. Cybertruck is 11.5 kilowatt, Powerwall is five kilowatt. And what this does is it means that more of your house, essentially you could combine the two of them together. So that would mean you would have the capability to have 16.5 kilowatt of continuous power output going to your house, huge improvement. Now, Tesla says PowerShare is capable of V2V, meaning you can use the Cybertruck to power or charge another vehicle. And this could even be a business. If you want to operate as a business, this is an option. You could just basically put your name down on Google to say you're an emergency electric vehicle um, for charging and just have your battery topped up. Not even, you probably don't even need to do that. The Cybertruck's got a very big battery. You could just drive to someone else and they call you, they pay you a fee. You drive out to them, you hook up your, your, your vehicle, very, very easy to hook up. And most vehicles, in fact, even I had an old Chinese vehicle from about 2019 that I've sold now, but that one even had this capability. You plug it into them, they pay you a fee to get them back on the road. And it could be a nice little earner for you, a nice little business opportunity here. People would pay you quite a bit of money for you to, to be able to do that for them. This happens more than you would think. And it doesn't just happen to EVs, it happens to gasoline powered vehicles. I have, in fact, ran out of uh, diesel in my vehicle a few years a few years back. I wasn't looking at the odometer. And, and anyway, I wasn't paying attention. I was on the phone and yeah, it does happen. But anyway, lots of good options with the Cybertruck to power your house, cars, tools, and even start a new business. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.